Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am super excited to bring you this super adorable, super beginner friendly, no so chubby, cheeky, froggy pattern. These are super adorable, super quick and easy to whip up. And I am like so jazzed up about them because I think they're gonna be like great in markets, great for selling online, stash busters. I think you can definitely add some like accessories to these guys to make them super cute too. But they whip up so quickly and you don't need a ton of yarn and they're absolutely no so even these little cheeky butts. Of course you need to embroider on their faces and you do need a sewing needle to finish everything off but I think they're super cute and super easy also I would love to see your versions of this pattern so if you want to tag me uh, on Instagram or whatever Twitter is now I don't I don't know or I don't know wherever I'm around on the internet all my links are below the pattern is in the description and also on Ribbler um, of course if you do like the pattern and you do like these videos uh, remember to give the video a like and subscribe and share the video it always helps with the channel growth so thank you guys so much and let's get into the materials so yarn first we're using sweet snuggles light and this is a super bulky or size six yarn it's recommending an eight millimeter hook um, but i am using a six millimeter hook for this pattern today the color is baby green but you can use any kind of green yarn honestly you can use um, a very chunky yarn or you could size down and use a size four yarn um, if you're using a size four yarn i would recommend using a 3.0 millimeter hook instead um, but I find the 6.0 millimeter hook works great with the uh, this yarn in particular but depending on your yarn you can size up or size down your hook and then we're also gonna need a yarn needle a stitch marker just to track our spots or you can use like a bobby pin or I don't know whatever <laughs> your marking method is and then I have some black cotton yarn just to do the details of the mouth and I also have 10 millimeter safety eyes. You can use the backings with them if you'd like. Sometimes I just find gluing them in is easier, but you can definitely use the backings on this one. We know where their eyes are gonna land because it's all crocheted in, but um, I like to use glue lately. Uh, and then we have our scissors and our polyester fiber fill stuffing. And then I just have a little piece of scrap pink fluffy yarn, and this is just for the cheeks. It is the same size as the Sweet Snuggles Light, but I'm not sure exactly where it came from. Uh, honestly, I just pulled it out of my stash somewhere. It's just a piece of scrap, scrap velvety pink yarn, so. So let's get moving on the pattern. So like I said, this is like a completely no sew, unless you're counting like the embroidery of the face, but this is completely no sew. So we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. Um, and then we're gonna like crochet bobbles in. So I've pulled you in nice and tight so you can see what I'm doing. Because we're using fluffy yarn, I'm gonna use the chain two method. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna wrap around our fingers and and I'm gonna create a slip knot and that's the way I create my slip knots I don't know some people use just their fingers to wrap around and then kind of push that through just like that um, but whatever whatever way you make your slip knots totally fine moving on so now we're gonna work on the chain two so we are gonna uh, for some reason I like to wrap for the for this part i'd like to go yarn over here and then make my two chains and then i have uh, i don't know i've talked about this before i don't know why i do the yarn over here and then i start in with the yarn under so we're going to be doing yarn under single crochets so in the second chain from the hook which is difficult to see because we've got fluffy yarn but not this one here that's the one that our yarn is kind of coming out of but in that other chain here we're going to single crochet eight so that was one single crochet so you'll notice this piece this is our chain that like um that's our second chain that we made 
Um, and then this is our first single crochet. So if you have trouble identifying your stitches at this point in time, you can always go ahead and put a stitch marker in on that first single crochet so you know where the start of your round is. So that was one. We're gonna go into the exact same spot that we that we just went into, and we're gonna do seven more. So we have a total of eight single crochets in that one loop. So you'll see these little, little Vs start to form. One, two, three, four. I keep losing count. Five, six, seven, and eight so because of the fluffy yarn it's hard to see but good thing we marked it um, we can see where our very first stitch is so i'm gonna go ahead and move this marker over to my last stitch because i can see which one it is now and i like to mark on my last stitch if you prefer to mark on your first stitch go for it <laughs> you do you um but i don't know why i just i just like the last stitch it makes me feel good so for round one we are going to increase in every single stitch around and an increase is just two single crochets into one single crochet so we'll just go into our first stitch we will do our first single crochet and then into the same stitch our second single crochet so that's our increase and we're gonna put an increase into every single stitch all the way around. So increase eight times all the way around. So you can see when I'm doing my, my single crochets, I'm actually going underneath the hook instead of traditional, which is over. Um, it's just, it just makes a different kind of single cro crochet stitch. But if you're not comfortable with doing that, totally fine, just stick to your normal yarn over. So we are going to continue to put two single crochets into one all the way around. So we had eight single crochets because we made a like a ring of eight and then we're doubling up on each on each stitch, which means we'll have 16 stitches at the end of the round. So coming on to my last one here, I am going to finish that increase. There we go. I'm going to put that back on and we should have 16 here. If you want to give it a count, go ahead and give your piece a count and make sure that you have 16. So for round two, we are going to do a combination over two stitches and the combination is going to be single crochet into the first stitch and then into the next stitch over we are going to increase so increase is just two into one and then that would give us so far three stitches so we're going to repeat this pattern of single crochet and then increase all the way around back to the beginning and this will be a total of eight times. So that combination of single crochet and increase will happen eight times all the way around. So single crochet and then increase. And then single crochet and then increase. So I'm just gonna go all the way around. Just finishing up my last set here. Single crochet and then increase. Okay, so I'm all the way back around. So what we did is we increased by eight because we went single crochet and then increase and we did that eight times around. So that means we did eight increases. So we had 16 um, at the end of the last round and we've added eight uh, stitches total. 
So now we have 24 stitches at the end of this round. If you want to go ahead and count, you can do that now. Usually I find that if I end up on the correct stitch, so I've instructed you to end up uh, on an increase, you're usually okay, but it's just good to count if you were a beginner, just to, just to make sure. Moving on to round three. So round three is where we're gonna get a little bit interesting. Uh, but don't worry, you'll be fine. Everything's fine, don't panic. Um, so we're gonna start out with single crocheting five stitches. So one, to the next one, two, three, four, oops, that's four, and five. Now that we've done our five single crochets, in the next stitch, we're gonna do a bobble. And for this pattern, we're doing two different versions of the bobble. So it's gonna be like a five, I think it's called like a five loop bob. I don't, honestly, I don't know. It's just the amount of loops that we're putting into this bobble essentially. But don't worry, don't panic, it's fine, we're good. So what we're gonna do is into the next stitch, we are going to yarn over first. I'm yarning under because that's the method that I'm doing it. You, you can yarn over, you can yarn under. I'm just saying put the yarn around your hook. It's just easier for me to call it yarn over because um, not a lot of people are familiar with the term yarn under. But yarn over your hook and then into the next stitch over, you're gonna put your hook in and then yarn over your hook again, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two, okay? So you should have two on your hook now. Now we're gonna do that again. We're gonna do yarn over your hook into the same stitch, okay? We're not moving on to the next stitch yet. We're going into the exact same stitch. And then we're gonna yarn over again, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So now we have three on our hook. And we're gonna do that again, yarn over, into the exact same stitch. We're not moving on to the next stitch yet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have four on our hook. We're gonna do it one more time. One, uh, sorry, yarn over <laughs> and into the exact same stitch. We're not moving on. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So you can see I have one, two, three, four, five loops on my hook. Now we need to make this combine into one stitch. So what we do is we yarn over and we're gonna pull through all of them. So now you can see when we look here, we've done like five loops, right? But when you look here, there's not five stitches. There's just the five that we did. So one, two, three, four, Oops, that one's from that one's from the previous round. Don't count that one. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's the sixth one. And the sixth one is the bobble stitch. So it'll start to like puff out like that. Make sense? Hopefully. I don't know how I expected an answer from you, but hopefully it makes sense. We'll go over it in a second again. So now the next step of what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue crocheting along our base here. So we're gonna find our first single crochet after the bobble. So I'd like to pull the bobble out of the way so I can see the next one right here. So we are going to single crochet into this one. And you can see that's our bobble stitch. It's only one stitch. It's not five stitches. Just because we yarned over a bunch doesn't mean it's, it's a different stitch or it's multiple stitches. It's one stitch. You can see one V here, okay? So we are going to do um, 11, sorry, I had to look at my pattern. We're gonna do 11 single crochets in between these bobbles. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. Okay, so now we're gonna do that same bobble stitch again and we're gonna do like that five looped bobble. So 
let's find the next stitch over we're gonna yarn over well you know yarn over or under whichever one and then into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two so now we've got three on our hook yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now there's four on our on our hook yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and try and pull through only two so then you'll have one two three four five loops on your hook let's cinch it all up into one so yarn over pull through all of them so now all of those little loopies are contained within one stitch here so now let's move on and we are going to single crochet the rest of the round and i think there's six uh, stitches left here so into the next one we're going to single crochet I like to make sure that this is nice and close to my work here so this is single crochet one two three four five and six so the key thing to remember with these baubles is they're not adding any any stitches like we've done a lot of yarn overs but it, they're still contained within one stitch so we didn't actually add or subtract any stitches this round so we should have 24 stitches at the end of this round including that single bobble stitch right here and right over here okay so that was round three and now we're going to move on to round four and we're just going to single crochet all the way around just to kind of like reset and figure out where our stitches went so we are going to single crochet 24 stitches all the way around i'm gonna pause kind of up close to this bobble here so i've gone nice and close to the bobble and i'm like okay well what do i do now like i can't what, do i go through each one of these what do i do what i want you to do is to turn your work towards you like usually we go into like these bumps here but you can't really see it with this in the way so i want you to pull this this way and then you can see these little these little lines right here this is the stitch right here this is the stitch it's not it's not all the way over here it's right here okay <laughs> and it's just one single crochet so we just single crocheted over top of that bobble and that's it there's no there we've done we're done with that bobble now on to the next one that's next single crochet is right here but you know how stitches kind of drift towards the right as you crochet if you're a righty um the hole is actually right here right because you know if we were looking at any other stitch here that's the stitch that little x shape is the stitch but towards the right like right in here is where we actually insert our hook into so same thing here here's the stitch and just up and towards the right is where we put our hook so there that's it try not to overthink it sometimes sometimes i find i always pop into the comments on my youtube videos to try and explain because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing but like just remember that we didn't add any stitches so there should only be one stitch there okay moving on i'm just single crocheting all the way around and we're gonna come back to this bobble here so let's find our first stitch this is the stitch right before our bobble, right? Sometimes it can kind of blend in, but we're not to our bobble yet. We need to do this one first. And then where the heck is our stitch? It's hidden here. So right in there, you're going to single crochet. And then next one over, remember this is the, the stitch after the bobble, but the hole is right up here, right here single crochet okay and then we're just going to continue single crocheting the rest of the way so this was 24 single crochets all the way around 
Uh, just because there was a bobble in the round before doesn't make it any different. <laughs> there we go. So now for round five, we are going to increase again. So to do this set of increases, we are going to single crochet five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we are going to increase into the sixth. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five single crochets, and then increase into the sixth. And we're gonna do that pattern of single crochet five and then increase four times around total. One, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna increase. One, two, three, four, and five, and then we're gonna increase. And then last time around, after I do this one, <laughs> we're gonna do it last time. Single crochet five, so one, two, <laughs> slipped out of that one, three, four, and five, and then increase. So because we did that, uh, that combination four times, that would mean that there's four increases. So we had 24 stitches at the end of the previous round, and now we added four stitches, so we have 28 stitches at the end of this round. Moving on to round six, we are going to do a bobble round, and these bobbles are gonna be the, the hands. So I want the hands and the legs to be a little bit smaller. So this was like a five loop bobble, and we're gonna do like a four loop bobble. So instead of having five loops on our hook and then we cinch it together, we're only gonna do four loops on our hook and then cinch it together. So let's get to the right place to start. So we are going to start by single crocheting 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, set, whoops. I'm like splitting my stitches here. Where's seven? Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're gonna do our bobble. So we're kind of like in the front of our piece here. Here's the eyeballs and we're in the front of our piece. So we're gonna do that bobble. So start by yarning uh, over. I'm yarning under, remember? I'm just yarning under, I'm calling it yarning over. <laughs> yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through only two. You'll have two on your hook. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have three on our hook. Yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have four. And last time we did it again and we had five on our, on our hook, but we're gonna stop here and we're gonna just scoop them up all together into one stitch. So yarn over, pull through all. So there you go, there's our one single stitch that came from the bobble. So now moving on, we are going to move our way over to the next hand. So we are going to single crochet six to get there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's where it could be different for you. So sometimes, depending on how your tension is or if you're using the yarn over method, it might be a little bit different from where, like where mine is sitting. So if you find that it's like, this doesn't look quite centered and you're finding that like, I, I don't know, it's just not lining up for you, don't worry, don't panic. Just like add another single crochet or subtract a single crochet before you do that bobble. It honestly doesn't really matter. It's still the same amount of stitches. You're just shifting where you're gonna place that hand. 
So I'm gonna do the same bobble. So we'll do four, four loops on our hook and then cinch it all together. So we'll get there. So yarn over. Okay, hold on, let me, let me go back. Let me talk you through this one more time. And then I think you guys will be fine for the feet. So start by yarning over your hook and then into the next stitch over, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the next, or into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So there's three here. You gotta do it one more time to get that fourth loop on. Yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we got one, two, three, four. We'll yarn over and tie them all together, okay? Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet all the way back to the end of the round. So if you've changed the position of your, I almost called them paws, <laughs> your hands, uh, then the, this number will not be the same. However, for me, it is 10 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and lastly, 10. Okay, moving on to round seven, we are going to do an increase round. So we are gonna start with single crocheting six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we're gonna increase into the seventh. So seven is here. And we're gonna do that combination of single crochet six and then increase, and we're gonna do that four times all the way around back to our stitch marker. So one, two, three. Remember how we do these bobbles? Four, oops, I messed up on that one. Four, <laughs> five, and six, and then increase into the seventh. Okay, two more times. One, two, three, pull that bobble back. Four, five, six, and increase into the seventh. And then last time here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then increase into the seventh. Right, so we just finished up with round seven and we should have 32 stitches at the end of this round because we added four stitches. Round eight is just going to be a straight single crochet round. So we are going to single crochet 32 stitches. So I'm just gonna zoom along here and I will meet you back at the end. I just finished up round eight and made it all the way around. So you can see there's my last increase here. I don't know if you can identify that stitch, but you can see there's like a big chunky stitch in here. It looks different from this one. So this was my last increase and I've gone all the way around and finished round eight. So round nine, we are going to increase again. So we are going to single crochet seven this time and then increase. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we are going to increase into the eighth, right? So we're gonna do that combination of single crochet seven and then increase four times all the way around. And then into the eighth, we are going to increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven and then increase into the eighth. I'm kind of speeding up my um, my roll now because <laughs> hopefully you can understand what what I'm doing and you understand the single crochets and you understand the increases. So I'm I'm speeding up my <laughs> my my crocheting. Okay, so we've added four stitches uh, to this round, essentially, and we should have 36 stitches at the end of this round. So for round 10, we are going to work on the legs. So we're gonna kind of position them like somewhere just outside of the hands. So let's work our way over there. So I started out with single crocheting 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And then we're gonna do our bobble into the fourteenth stitch. So the bobble is gonna be the same version of the bobble that we did for the hands. So it's that four loop one. So let's start by yarning over into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then into the same stitch yarn over into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two so now we have three yarn over into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two so now we've got four we're going to yarn over and cinch them all together here we go now we are going to work our way over to the other foot so depending on your tension and depending on what kind of single crochet version you're using um, this might be different you know if you subtracted uh, in between the two arms you might have a different amount between the legs but i'm gonna go with nine so single crochet nine that's one two three four five six seven eight and nine and then in the next stitch over i'm going to bobble we're going to do the same bobble so yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two you have two here yarn over into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now you've got three Yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we've got four, and let's cinch them all together with a yarn over and pull through. And then we've got our single bobble stitch right here. Okay, now we are gonna work our way back to our stitch marker. And I think this is single crochet 12 here. So one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve okay so we did not increase and we did not decrease the bobble only counts as one stitch so we do have 36 stitches at the end of this round now we are going to start decreasing so we are going to decrease by doing invisible decreases and we're going to do them in patterns so the first pattern for round 11 is going to be single crochet four and then invisible decrease so let's start one two three four and then invisible decrease is just putting two stitches together but we're doing it in a way that creates less holes i guess so into the front loop only so if we can separate our stitches into front loop and back loop this is our front loop here see that one little loop here we're going to pick up that first front loop and then we're going to go and pick up the second front loop so you should have two loops here and then one from the previous stitch here we're going to yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through both so that's our invisible decrease. So we're gonna do that combination of single crochet four and then invisible decrease. We're gonna do that six times all the way around. So one, two, three, four. 
and then we're going to invisible decrease the next two stitches so identify your front loops one two front loops yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then we're going to do the single crochet four and invisible decrease again we're going to just keep repeating that six times total back to our stitch marker one two three and four and then invisible decrease Oop. Oop. one two three four okay so we've had it that we land on an invisible decrease when we have to do our bobble so the first stitch is not part of the bobble but we're going to pick up the front loop and we're going to treat the next stitch the bobble the same way we're just going to try and find the front loop so if i like put my my hook through both loops there's like the two loops here we only want that front half so tr try not to overthink it it's it's just one stitch so that's our invisible decrease over top of that little bobble and then we'll continue on one two three four and invisible decrease one two three four and then last invisible decrease will be the last two stitches here so i had to pull off my marker because that one was the last stitch and there we go so at the end of round 11 we should have 30 stitches because we decreased six times therefore we I was going to say we decrease six times. Yeah, so we decrease six times. We subtract six stitches from our total. Uh, we had 36 minus six, 30. So for round 12, we're almost there. We're just trying to like close everything up now. We're going to do a similar pattern. We are going to single crochet three this time. One, two, three, and then invisible decrease. There we go. So we're gonna do that pattern of single crochet three, invisible decrease, six times around total. So I'm just gonna whip right through, or try to whip right through. <laughs> One, two, three, and invisible decrease, if I can. Sometimes I slip too, so like don't, don't get too frustrated because it just happens. Um, I'm gonna continue along here. I'll probably just speed this part up. So this is my last decrease okay if i can i keep slipping on the fluffy yarn last decrease there so we decreased six times we had 30 stitches at the end of the last round decreased by six equals 24 stitches now okay so i'm gonna just pull up that loop here and let's kind of work on our face and body and it, you know if you're using the backings it's a great idea or a great time to do that now before we start getting too small um, so let's work on the face i'm just, just going to kind of zoom out a little bit so we can see a little bit better all right so we kind of know where our eyes are gonna go hopefully if it's not obvious it is right here and right here but sometimes depending on where how like the stitch falls it can be a little bit tricky to like get the right spot so i have to move it around a lot uh to try and figure out where it looks best so i feel like it kind of looks best like tilted forward a little bit and it is very hard to get the backings in um, on this little bobble stitch because it's so chunky with the bobbles here but I, the goal is to just move your your little eyeball around until you get it into a spot that you that you like and honestly sometimes it doesn't quite work out just because of the the um the way that we bobble but a little bit of like funk to our little frogs i think is totally fine so i'm just gonna kind of flip this out and see if i can find the backing you can see we don't have much backing to work with but i'm gonna try anyways and throw on a um, 
a little backing here do my best but this is kind of why i like glue in some situations just because you can just throw that thing that 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 on anything like <laughs> You can just add it to anything and it works out. But I will say that I do prefer putting them on this way. And I feel like people put them on this way all the time, but I want to put them on this way. Um, just because I feel like it's got a little bit more room to work with. So I'm just putting it on like one, one little spot. And then we're going to invert and kind of push it back out again. So, and sometimes I find that I have to tuck some more f like fabric underneath, um, but we'll, we'll work on that when we, when we stuff, because I think we are in the right spot, but sometimes I only want to, you know, putting the backings on makes it like suck in too much. So I just like to readjust and move things around, but Honestly, glue is so heckin' easy. I, I've, I've really started to prefer the glue situation and um, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to say it. We're gonna leave this stuff until the very end to embroider in the cheekies because we can just kind of tie, tie it off. So let's continue crocheting here. I'm gonna grab my hook again. And I think we are on round 13. So our pattern will be single crochet two, one, two, and then invisible decrease. So we're gonna do that combination of single crochet two and invisible decrease six times around. Just coming up to my last set here, single crochet two and invisible decrease. So at the end of this round, we should have 18 stitches because we reduced by six. Okay, so for round 14, we are almost done. We are going to single crochet and then invisible decrease. We're gonna do that combination six times around. So single crochet and invisible decrease. We're just gonna repeat that. Single crochet, invisible decrease. Single crochet and invisible decrease. Single crochet, invisible decrease decrease and then single crochet and last one invisible decrease so we decreased by a total of six so we should have 12 at the end of this round i'm gonna pull up the loop and we are gonna start stuffing so i find that i like to use a lot of stuffing but uh, depending on how much stuffing you use it's just more firm or less firm it honestly i i just kind of fill it out to how i like it and then we uh we seam up but i also like to add a little bit more stuffing because we're going to be doing this little butt area um so having some junk in the trunk helps with defining the cheeks when we when we add that in later and of course you don't have to add the cheeks it, it it's just i just thought it was a fun thing to do adding butt cheeks onto something is i think is just silly but maybe i'm a little bit immature who knows okay so i'm just seeing how i like my little guy and we do have another opportunity to stuff a little bit later, but I find majority of the stuffing happens now. 
and I think that's good. So I'm gonna put my piece back on, make sure my stitch marker is back in. We are on the last round, round 15. Sorry, I couldn't, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was 14 or 15. Round 15 is literally just invisible decreasing all the remaining stitches together. So every two stitches, we are going to invisible decrease together. So it's a total of six times. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. Two more here. That's number five. And last one. This one gets a little bit tight. One, two. Okay. So if you find that you need a little bit more, um, you can go ahead and stuff a little bit more, but I find that that is more than enough. So for this last part, let's do some of the butt shaping. And to do that, I am going to just kind of pull up maybe, I don't know, maybe about that much. We don't need too much, but enough to like work with. Sorry, I'm making a mess with all of my bits and bobs here. I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and we are gonna close this up by picking up the front loops only of the remaining stitches. So there should be six stitches here and we're gonna pick up the front loops only of the remaining six. And I just kind of pull it tight along the way and then pull it back. So this is just gonna close off this little spot here. And you can see I'm like losing all of my fibers. I've seen people like burn the ends of this and that seems to help, but I'm too nervous for that, I guess. So that's all six here. So now from here, wait, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think that's six. From here, we're gonna add the butt. So this is the front of our piece and this is the back of our piece. So I kind of just, you know, mush them into place and I'm gonna go through that hole that we just created. And then I'm gonna go up several rounds, probably to about here. I like to overcompensate. <laughs> I'd like to go up nice and high. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Between round six and seven, I'm gonna go up here and right in the, in the middle. It doesn't matter too much. Um, where you come out because we're just gonna cinch it right down. So you're gonna come up and then pull. So you sink this in and then go all the way back down, pull this all the way back down and then back into that same hole and then back up and out the same spot that you came up here. And now we're gonna pull nice and tight and this creates our cheeks. So try not to like yank it too much because your, your yarn will break. Um, but just give it a nice tug. And I find like, you know, pushing this part in and making the cheeks happen is helpful. And then hold this and we're going to make a little knot to secure it. So I'm gonna do two just to make sure because it's tight. So just make those knots loop them in and then we're gonna hide this yarn tail by just kind of pushing in and out the other side there we go Ta-da! he's got a little butt now so give him a little squish around and then we can trim that yarn tail and get rid of all these little floofs and we are going to embroider the face. So the reason why I like to do this at the end is because sometimes it is difficult to determine where where your mouth lies um, after or before it's stuffed. So once everything is like stuffed and ready to go, you can like move his, his hands around, his feet around, make sure the eyes are in the right spots, all that good stuff. If you wanna glue them in, now is a good time to glue that in. And I think this part is personal preference. So I like using little lines, <laughs> little lines for my mouths. Um, 
but sometimes I like doing a little smiley face sometimes I like doing an upset face uh, but it's it's kind of all just personal preference so I'm gonna go kind of around this area I like the mouth to be up nice and high and I'm gonna come out a little bit towards the left I'm not gonna pull this all the way through and then I'm gonna go maybe maybe that far over and then back into the middle we're gonna come right back out the middle here and if you like just that little smile you could just pull it back out to this side and tie it off but let's see sometimes I like to mess around with it and see if I can come up with like different different uh, different looks but I think I think a little a little smile would be nice so I'm gonna just like pull that out the middle and pull it down and then we're gonna go right back out where this one is coming in and then you can pull that down and then you can because this is like very uh, fluffy yarn it sometimes gets lost so you can kind of just move the uh, the yarn out of the way and kind of reposition it and sometimes you need to pull it back down but you know if you want to make an upset one just do this the other way so you know instead of pulling it down pull it up and then that will give you an upset face and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie this off I don't find this necessary all the time if you're not gonna be playing around with it but you can tie it off and then I'll trim the yarn ends and then I'm just gonna tuck the yarn ends in so we can't see them anymore Ta -da! and then we can move around the mouth as we see fit I always I mess around with the mouth a lot um, sometimes I'll like trim some of this fluffy stuff around here so it doesn't it doesn't get too lost but I'll move it around a lot until I like I like how it how it looks uh, you can do like more narrow V shape too it's just all about preference so I'm gonna take the pink yarn and we'll finish off by adding the cheeks in so I'm gonna go probably somewhere here and I'm gonna just land the cheeks somewhere underneath the eyes right here and then we're gonna go out like this and I'm gonna do that twice I'm gonna give it like a double up of yarn and don't pull this too tight just uh, just loose and then I'm gonna push it all the way to the other side which is sometimes very tricky and I'm just I'm don't pull it too tight just nice and loose and we're gonna try and match it over on this side to the best that we can uh, sometimes it's a little bit different because of how our rows line up so this row is lining up a little bit closer to the eye then that one so I'm gonna come out here I'm gonna go up up a little bit yeah and I'm gonna go I might just split a stitch just to see if it works better with me splitting a stitch instead instead of going like in the actual holes of the, the piece okay I think I'm happy with that but I'm gonna push it all the way out the other side here and line it up with this one give everything a squish and a pull and make sure that we like the the spacing of the little cheeks if you want to move them back a little bit more I think I have them a little bit further back in this one but honestly he looks pretty cute either way so the only difference that I have between these two is the eyes are not like glued in and I find that when you have the backings on it like pulls it in more and it doesn't allow it to sit nicely over the top it like tries to scooch it in so much so that's why I like using the the glue because I can just kind of place them but if you really want to use the backings, I showed you how to use the backings. Um, it's just uh, it's just preference. And if you want it a little bit more stable, you know, 
it works it works I, it works either way i just i don't know i'm a, I'm a glue kind of lady it seems so for this we're making sure that we're coming out the same hole here and i'm just gonna give it a little tie and then we'll trim and hide the excess so just make sure that you're coming out the same hole or else it's not going to stick into that that hole because you'll be over top of a stitch Alrighty. so what do we think was that easy i think it was pretty easy but then again i did design it so super cute super easy stash buster works up super quick you don't need a lot of yarn i'm pretty thrilled about it <laughs> i think they're super cute and you can try it out in different ways if you prefer the eyes glued on if you prefer the eyes cinched in if you want to mess around with the um the way that the mouth is um and find like the the shape that you like like this one's a little more narrow this one's a little wider um up to you so if you got to this point hopefully you have your little chubby cheeky froggies done um and i hope you enjoyed the pattern of course uh if you liked the video and if you like the pattern please remember to give this video a like subscribe share it it always helps with um engagement and the algorithm and getting this pattern out there and of course you can get this pattern over on Ribbler. Um, all of the links are down below. But anyways, I hope you guys like this pattern and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>